Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Nick Bachtel with the Bachtel Forging Company. Today, I'm gonna to be forging a 10-inch Bowie knife out of a one-inch bar of 52100, and uh, I figured I'd bring you guys along. To start the profile of the blade, I'm gonna take the round bar and forge a point to it. So here goes nothing. It's getting there. First heat, not too bad for a first heat. I'm not gonna forge it perfectly to a point. I guess you could do that. But we'll just get it close, and then I'm gonna flatten the bar out on the power hammer. That'll just get me in the general direction of having a point on my flat bar, and uh, we'll just make the profile forge together a little bit easier. If I didn't forge the bar to a point, when I flatten it out, it could, uh, kind of like go in on itself and make like a, a fish mouth or whatever people call it. It just wouldn't, I'd have to take it to the grinder to fix that. So might as well do this now. And it'll be easier down the road. So that looks pretty good. So now it's, uh, you know, four-sided. I'm just gonna kind of round off the corners. And then I push the point down to the bottom side. So when I flatten it out, it'll kind of favor one side. So now we're gonna get a long length of the bar heated up and we're gonna go under the power hammer and draw it out. We're gonna flatten it, but we're gonna flatten it widthways instead of lengthways. Because if I if I draw it out lengthways, uh, the blade will be really slim and really thin. And I like slim knives, but this bar is only an inch thick. I want to get as much width out of it as possible. So under the power hammer. Go back in for another heat, get it hot again, keep going. A lot of guys want to make their Bowie knives have a lot of distal taper, so it's real thick by your guard and real thin at your tip, but then it'll flex a lot. You don't really want something that's meant for stabbing. It's going to flex. I don't forge my Bowie knives very much distal taper in them. When you grind the clip, that kind of adds distal taper to it. You know, all that geometry slims it down, and but it'll still be stout, stout and stiff. Check my length. This is about eight inches of probably three eighths to maybe even half inch out here, thick. I had like one and one and a half, three quarter. It's plenty of material for a 10 inch blade, so. Just gonna keep forging off the bar. We're gonna draw it out, get everything where I want it, stretch it out a little more. Oh yeah. Scrape a little scale off of it.
grab my tongs, hold it off to the side. Not bad. So forging in the tip, forging the bar to a point, that's why this is already pointed down here like that, and there's no cold shuts, there's no fish mouths or whatever you call it. Um, and then knocking it down to one side made it so the clip comes down like this already. So I can knock this back and just keep rolling. Saves me from going to the grinder and cleaning it up or anything like that. So it's a good little tip. Just cooling the bar down a little bit. So this Bowie knife is for my, uh, my buddy Keith. He traded me a single action army for it and 357 Magnum. So this knife is long overdue, but here we are. It's gonna be a mean hog fighting Bowie knife. Uh. So I'm just gonna check how thick it is out there near the tip, near where the clip starts. It's just a hair under 300 thousandths, which is thick. So I got plenty of material. Check how long it is. I'm already at nine inches. I haven't even forged, I haven't even forged the tip in, you know, very far or anything like that. So plenty of material, nice and thick. So I can check my width here too. It's about an inch and a half, a little over an inch and a half thick. So going to be a slim but stout Bowie knife for hunting hogs down there in Tennessee or down in Appalachia, wherever you're at, Keith. So I'm forging the clip down almost to nothing down here. So when I forge my bevels in, the, the pinching of the bevels will sweep the clip up, make it look nice and mean. So from here to the tip, it's almost 10 inches. But I have just tons of material, so. So now you can go under the power hammer and square everything up, make it look real nice. And then we'll put our preform in, and then we'll forge the bevels out and kind of get closer, so. It's like a quarter of the way done. heat in the back and just keep going. I'm liking the way it's looking. It's going to be super nice. I can already kind of picture it in my head. 
I always like forging knives out off of the end of a round bar because when they're done, they feel like some like medieval weapon. It's kind of cool. <laughs> So that's 10 all day right there. I kind of want to cut it off the bar. It's kind of heavy and annoying. <laughs> gonna say the finger decapitator but that doesn't make any sense <laughs> keep my tongs handy okay. try to do this gracefully as possible So I cut it about 99% of the way through just so I can bend it by hand. So if I go all the way through, the, uh, the hot cut will leave a big dent in my dies on my hammer. Ah. And there it goes. So now I have like exactly 10 inches of material. But I have, it's just super thick. It'll be a hidden tang. So the tang will go through the the handle. I'm not quite sure what the handle's going to be yet. But the tang will go through the handle, so it's not going to really take up very much material. I still have a ton of material back here. Even out at the tip, it's only a quarter of an inch, so I have just a ton. So historically speaking, and a lot of guys kind of can give you flack over the size of a Bowie knife. I've heard people say like, oh, if it's not over 10 inches, then it's not a Bowie knife. It's just a hunting knife or whatever. Well, People who say that probably aren't making Bowie knives. I've made Bowie knives all the way from like maybe five inches for like a good everyday carry knife, like a gentleman's Bowie knife, all the way up to like an 11 inch one. And then people, both modern and historically, have made Bowie knives up to like 14, 15, 16, 20 inches long, just crazy. They're like short swords. But back then they were made for fighting people and doing all, you never knew. You never knew what you were gonna endure in a day, so. If you want a, a little Bowie knife to carry around, like a little five and a half, maybe six inch knife is like perfect. You can put it on your belt or like in your pocket. If you're like going camping or like, I go fly fishing a lot, I take the canoe out a lot. I like to carry a seven inch or seven, seven and a half inch. And at that point, it's kind of like a hunting knife, like a big hunting knife and like a small camp knife. So you can do all sorts of stuff with it. A 10 inch Bowie knife has a lot of swing weight. You have a lot of, it, it just wants to cut through stuff. So that's like more of a chopper, I like a seven inch, seven and a half inch. It's not too big to carry around. It's not too small. You can do all sorts of stuff, so. So I really don't need a whole lot for the tang. Still super thick, but now my blade length is probably about nine inches, so I gotta stretch it out. I just wanna get the tank started, and then uh, I have to forge down the Ricasso, so I'll use a little uh, set down or a little set down tool under the power hammer, and
Sweet. Just that little step. And as I forge in the bevel right here, it'll come down even further. That's where the edge will begin. And then my little, uh, my NMB stamp will go on this side right there. Right on the center of that Ricasso. That's looking pretty mean already. I love slim knives. 10. Coat. We gotta draw it out some more. Lengthwise, I need a lot more, I need an inch of length, so. We'll, uh, I'll draw it out until the blade looks like really thin, like too thin. And then, uh, but it'll be really thick. So I'll draw it out, and then when I start forging my plunges in, then I'll get that, the, the width back. so thin. Yeah, we'll keep going. So back at the spine where the, the blade meets the guard, it's still like three-eighths of an inch thick, which is like, it's about as thick as you should be making a Bowie knife. So we're just going to keep stretching it out. A knife of this size and thickness can have more distal taper. I have personally made Bowie knives that had like flex in the tip, and I don't want that at all. So it's not a kitchen knife. You don't, you're not deboning anything. You don't need any flex. You don't want any flex in a Bowie knife, so. So I'm just gonna adjust the airflow so I have a little more oxygen. It gets steel hot a little quicker. As I get closer to final shaping on the knife, you want to be forging at a little bit of a lower heat. So uh, I'll turn the air down a little bit more, forge at a lower heat, just to get everything dialed in. again. It's only about nine and a quarter now. Okay. I know forging in the bevels will also give me a little bit more length. I don't want to make the blade too thin. So we have a lot of nice swing weight. See so what I did is I I hammered out too much for the Ricasso and the Tang. That's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly 10 inches, just kind of what I was shooting for. But I don't really, I don't really forge knives bigger than seven, eight inches, not very often, so. That's all right. All right, so I'm gonna start putting like a preform into the blade. It's gonna banana down and just kind of bend. So then when I hammer in my bevels, it'll swing back up. actually do a little bit more on the tip because there's a lot of curve there'll be a lot of the tips really thick so when you forge all that material down thin it'll swing up really high so I turn it down a little bit
From here, I'm going to lay down the plunges right back here with the, uh, you know, the ricasso and the choil begin right there. I'm going to lay down my plunges by hand on the anvil, and then uh, we're going to start stretching the steel out widthwise, and it'll straighten this out, and uh, it'll look more like a knife. I want it a little bit more. Happy medium. So now you can see, like I pinched the edge out right there and started drawing it out, but I didn't hit the ricasso. I don't know if I could have done that any cleaner. <laughs> so now I just got to keep pinching the blade all the way down, and it'll kind of swing up, and that'll take a whole lot of grinding out of the process. So if you're forging smaller knives, you can make the argument that you don't really have to forge very close to final shape. You don't have to forge the bevels in. I don't mind grinding a knife a little bit longer than forging it. If you're making a 10 inch Bowie knife, it's probably a good idea to forge the bevels in, forge it really close, because by forging the bevels into your knife, you're basically rough grinding it and getting the, the grind started on it without even sitting at the grinder. So if you have like, let's say you have like some pretty basic tools, if you wanna make a knife with just a file, or if you wanna make a knife with like an angle grinder or something, maybe you have like a small belt grinder, it's not very powerful, Forge your knife as close as you possibly can to final dimension, final shape. Forge the bevels down so then the finishing process is like that much shorter. So if you're a stock removal knife maker, you want to make a 10 inch Bowie knife, you're going to be standing at that grinder a lot longer than I am just by forging it out. So if you want to make big knives, forge them out. If you want to make any knives, forge them out. You can see how like the blade from where I was forging it already started to kind of sweep back up, back in line instead of being super dropped. Back in for another heat. So now that edge thickness is pretty thin, not quite an eighth of an inch thin. But uh, so that's just like the rough beveling of the knife. Now we'll uh, get it closer, get the profile dialed in, get everything straightened up, get the spine and the edge parallel, and get my clip to come up a little bit more. She's hot. <laughs> so now, just the way I forge it, there's a big recurve. That's kind of a, a modern-y kind of look. It's all right. I just like my, uh, my spine and my edge to be parallel. Where the blade's edge has a recurve, 
I'm gonna focus in the like the low spot and really use the rounder on my hammer and really pull the blade out so I can get a nice parallel edge once everything is said and done. See, now it's like pretty damn straight, pretty parallel. Just got to kind of dial it in now. Flatten everything out, make sure everything's straight. So I'm just going to dial in my tip. I kind of don't know where to go with it. Okay, okay. So this is where some planning would have been smart in the beginning. Make a drawing of exactly what I want. But uh, I guess we could just kind of, so all the, there's a ton of big hammer marks in it now. So I can just start kind of working at a lower heat, smoothing everything out with the flat face on my hammer. Just kind of dialing everything in. I'll check to make sure I have the, uh, the length that I need. Yeah, it's just short of 10. So I need to drop the, uh, the heel or the choil, whatever you want to call it, just a little bit. If I go with my, the flat face on my normal forging hammer, it'll kind of just spread stuff out. So I'm going to go, I'm going to use my, uh, my cross peen on a cross peen hammer and use that you can really pull material with it and move it exactly where you need it to go as long as you're accurate if you're not accurate you can leave a big old dang in your in your blade somewhere and we don't want that so Need a little bit more heat. Cool. Mm -hmm. I think I'll work on the tang a little bit and get everything in line. Stretch it out a little bit more. This looks kind of dinky. We're getting there. It's close, but it's like a lot of material in the Ricasso still. So it looks like there's a lot of taper in it. I don't really lot, want a lot of taper in it, but it's still nice and thick. It's still like 300 thousandths thick in like the middle of the blade. So now I'm just going to straight, straighten out the tang, forge out the tang, and kind of make sure I have enough material and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of Bowie knives, a lot of knives in general where guys make the tangs like super thin. You don't want to make a rat tail tang knife or uh, you know, you want like a thick tang. You want the handle to be supported really well by the, the knife inside of it. If not, it's just gonna bend or break or ain't gonna be very strong.
going to be close to 10. So when I first started forging knives, say I wanted to make a 10 inch Bowie knife, I probably would have cut off a giant piece of steel and had like a ton left over and a ton to grind. So I always try to overshoot a little bit. I'll usually make a drawing of what I have in mind, get my vision clear on paper, and then go from there and try not to have too much steel. Just, you just want it just big enough to make the knife that you have and you're, you know, you want to have just enough to take off on the out. You don't want your forging to be too small or too undersized. Okay, okay. I want to make the spine and the edge parallel. And there's all different, like, you can use, like, a, a piece of wood, because the wood won't deform the steel. But instead of, uh, instead of using a piece of wood or anything like that, I'm going to use my normal hammer, and I'm not going to let my edge get as hot as my spine, so my edge won't want to roll over. I can even let it cool on the anvil for a minute. So it takes some of the heat out of the edge, and uh, that'll make it harder than the spine. So the spine will move while the edge stays, stays straight, not you know fold over or anything like that. Now those are pretty parallel. Certainly clean up at the grinder. I could use a little bit more back here. And uh, we're just dialing it in. My tang is still plenty thick. I might even spread it out a little bit more because it's, it's plenty of thick this way. It could be a little bit more, but that's gonna be nice. I'm liking that quite a bit. We still have a lot of material out in the clip, so I might I might draw that out just a little bit more. Yeah. It's just under nine and three quarters. I think we'll be able to reach ten though. So right where the clip begins, it's still like a quarter of an inch, which is like super thick. So as long as it's not like an eighth of an inch thick. It won't flex or anything like that. I'm gonna go under the power hammer just to draw that out quick. That's better. It's at 10 now. So just gotta sweep it up and clean everything up. Get some dust in my eye. <laughs> now I'll start really forging at a lower heat. I won't go to quite like a yellow orange heat. I'll keep it a, a little in the red, little orange red. That's looking nice. It's looking super nice. 
<laughs> Making a knife. Cool. So now I'm going to start to plurnish the blade, which is just like nice light blows to get everything really flat. I'm going to start at the tip, like the tip, the top third of the knife, and just kind of focus there, then kind of work my way back. And then I'll do a whole straightening, and then I'll probably put my stamp on it. If I screw up the stamp, that, which happened, if I screw up the stamp after forging this out, I ain't going to be very happy. That's looking good, man. That's looking like mean and stabby. Got to kind of look at it like top to bottom and, you know, edge down, edge up. That's looking mean, though. When I grind that to a, just get it a little bit more to a point, I could even forge that down, but I don't know if I'm going to. There might be a tiny little fish mouth at the end. So that was the top third. I just kind of cleaned up. Now it's nice and flat, and there's no deep hammer marks. So now I'm just going to move back a little bit and work my way down. We're going to do uh, the last third. You know, for a second there, I didn't know how this was going. <laughs> I was like, eh, is that really looking that great? Kind of had some weird little bulges here and there, but it looks good now. It looks mean. It's a mean looking knife. It has a little bit of flow. It might have a little bit of an upsweep to it, and the clip will have a little bit of flow in it, but not too much. I don't really like knives with a recurve or anything like that. They look cool, just not my flavor. So I'm going to do another one back here and just clean all this up, get my, uh, my, my edge into the middle. It's a little bit off to my side of, a little bit, so. So now I'm just gonna just gotta straighten up the tang a little bit. Maybe put a little bit of drop into it for a piece of antler. That'll pretty much be done. Be ready for the stamp. It's actually pretty straight. I haven't straightened it at all, and at least the, along the, uh, the spine. If I'm careful, it should be 10 right on the dot. So now I just want to, uh, I just want to get my ricasso really flat. I've used a flatter on my underneath the power hammer, but uh, I'll just do it by hand with the hand hammer and just be really careful. I'll get it really flat, and then I'll use my stamp and we'll hot stamp the blade.
think she's ready for stamping. That's a nice profile, nice and slim. So now we're ready to uh, stamp the blade. I made this little jig to hold my stamp, my little initial stamp, and it has like a, a depth, a little depth screw on the side here, so I can uh, figure out where I want it to be. The head of this, the screw will kind of keep it, you know, if I do my part, it'll kind of keep it parallel, I mean, perpendicular, so my, my stamp is perpendicular to my spine, which is really what I want. Either perpendicular or just slightly tilted forward. If it's tilted backwards, it w will look terrible. It'll stand out, it'll look terrible. And I, I would start over. But, I think right there is about good. So the objective here is to get a really deep stamp so my initials stand really bold and the background is, because it's an embossed stamp, and the background sits, sits lower than like my initials and the rest of the blade. So the objective is to get the steel super hot, get this lined up perfectly, and then smack the ever-living hell out of it <laughs> with a four-pound hammer and hope it turns out all right. So it's always a gamble, but when it looks good, it looks super good. That's okay. Oh yeah. That looks great. It's a little uh it's a little wonky because it kind of flew like that. I think it's just because of the stamp, like I don't know, stamp's kind of weird, but killer. So even like a piece of scale was in the steel and when I stamped it it popped out so there's like a kind of a divot. That'll look cool. Sometimes I'll even <coughs> get the square out check to see. That looks pretty good. Back here, the blade kind of comes out this way, but that's okay. The blade kind of comes out back here, but I'm going to grind I'm going to grind it perfectly straight, so if anything, it's a little bit tilted forward, which is good. That'll just it'll kind of flow with the blade and look fast. It's it's better than tilting backwards. So now I just got to flatten everything out and it's done. I can work on and go on to, uh, I can go on to thermal cycling and heat treating and all that fun stuff, so. We'll do a little bit of profile grinding too, so you can get a clear, you know, I can see a, a sleek, sexy Bowie knife in my head. I'm sure some of you think it looks like a, a turd, but it's going to look good. So we'll, we'll, prof we'll profile grind it a little bit and then uh, probably call it a day for today. I'm not really doing anything too great here. Yeah, it looks like a, it is super. <whistles> so I'm just gonna straighten it out a little bit. Blade looks pretty good, just gotta straighten out the tang. The 
tang and the blade are nice and straight, especially along the spine. But since the, uh, the edge is, the bevels are forged in, it's kind of wonky. So I'm going to take it over and put it in the vise and use a pair of tongs and kind of like straighten everything out. Tang looks a little bit off now. Might be my plunge. Yeah, no, plunge centered. It's my tang that's a little bit off. But now the blade looks like it's pretty perfect. Blade looks good. I just need to hammer the tang over a little bit. That's it. Cool. Forging's done. There you can grind and I am gonna check my my length and check my thickness too. So with my stamp there. I think it's gonna be just shy of 10 inches. Maybe, yeah, right at 10 inches. Yeah, it's like exactly 10, but I know I might trim it back a little tiny bit. And then I have over five inches for the handle, so cool. Final blade measures out to just 10 inches. It's a little bit bigger than a quarter inch thick, which is perfect. It's about 270, maybe 280 thousandths thick. So it's just a stout knife. It's perfect. It'll, it'll be perfect for its intended purpose. So good camp knife, good hog hunting knife. So that's how I forge a 10 inch Bowie knife. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any comments, put them down below. You can check me out on Instagram or Facebook at Bactyl Forging Company. And uh, take it easy. <laughs>